How's it going fam? Welcome back to Erica's EDC and today we are going to talk about two new designs that I have collaborated on with two custom makers and then that's going to flow into a conversation about my overall favorite custom makers. I've been working with a lot of them lately and I I really wanted to go to Blade Show this year. I've been wanting to go for years. One day I'll be able to but because I wasn't able to go show my appreciation for all of my friends, I wanted to make a video on their products instead because even though we didn't get to go to Blade Show, we can still support from home, we can still buy their products online, so I thought it would just be a cool video to make. But we're going to go over two new designs that I'm really excited to show you guys. These are by two makers that are not only my friends, but just incredible craftsmen in general. So let's go over this first one. This is a new design by Kyle at the Scrawny Lumberjack, and this is called the Vulture. And if you have been watching my channel, you would notice that this sure does look like a big version of a model that he already makes, which is called the Seeker. And the Seeker is a little tiny neck knife. Um, I think it's more of like an EDC knife or a backup neck knife, um, backup bushcraft knife depending on what style you get but this is the big brother to that and this is called the vulture and this is a very cool new design that is more of a full-size knife and it's definitely an edc knife but could surely be an outdoors knife as well so this one is in 4v blade steel it's at 64 to 65 hrc um we've got 15 thou bte on this one with a 15,000 grit edge on it. That is just absolutely insanely sharp. It's actually scary. Um, and then we also have something really cool on here, which I don't know if many of you have seen yet, but these scales are called Grip Tech Scales. And my buddy over at Rock Solid Scales has come up with this new material to use on EDC knives, hunting knives, any, any type of outdoor knife really. But this is called Grip Tech. And what it is, is resin and rubber kind of infused together. So it's kind of the idea that we had behind SureGrip, which is G10 and rubber, but this is resin and rubber. So it's really, really durable and it provides a ton of grip. This is one of the first knives ever made with this material. And I'm super excited to test it. It's very durable. He made a video with a sample size of his grip tech and he took a I think it was a peening hammer and he smashed it into the material and it left just the slightest little dents and it's something that would have completely destroyed other handle materials that we see on the market but this is very durable um resin is obviously kind of like a plastic type material so it's basically a really durable plastic with tiny bits of rubber all throughout and the cool thing about this is that it doesn't feel like squishy. Um, it doesn't make it feel like you're using a, a pretend knife, right? It just is really, really grippy. It's extremely grippy underwater and with wet substances, but this handle material I think is gonna be a huge hit because this is gonna be awesome for outdoor use. So obviously we're going to be testing this. Um, I'm really excited about it, but this model is also really exciting to test because I had part in designing it. Um, it's just a big version of the Seeker, essentially. We did put some really cool jimping where your thumb goes and also your index finger so that you can use this for processing game or anything where you would use a grip like that to do fine detail work, you have your finger completely locked in there. And then you've got your jimping here for your thumb as well. But the overall design is really simplistic. Um, I think it will fit everyone's hand very well. I'm super excited to test it. The 4V is done incredibly well. Kyle just does insane work. He really does. Um, the Scrawny Lumberjack. I am just so excited to show you guys how this knife performs. This is not my first knife from Kyle. I have many but I'm just super excited about this design and to show you guys how it works. I would say Kyle is known for his edges. I, out of all the knives I've ever used, <laughs> ever since I was five years old using and collecting knives, and I'm almost 30, 
Um, Kyle does the best edges I've ever seen in my entire life. Just hands down, these are the sharpest knives you will ever handle. Um, he sent rolling paper with this knife and you can literally like free cut rolling paper, which is like literally so thin. His edges are just insane. So if you're looking for a performance knife, the scrawny lumberjack is where you want to be looking. Very, very excited about this collaboration. We will be making five vultures in M4. They're going to be around 64 HRC, vintage linen micarta, beautiful liners. Um, those will be full height grind so that they're super slicey. Those are in the works right now, but that is something coming down the pipeline that I am just so excited about. And I can't wait to give you guys feedback on this grip tech because I think this is going to I think once this really hits the market, it's going to be a huge seller for any anybody that makes knives. The next knife is just insane. Um, the next knife is another collaboration that I've done. This one is with Dusty from Duckhead Forge. He's down in Georgia. He works at Pops Knife Supply. He is an incredible maker. He does not give himself enough credit. Um, he literally told me, like, I did okay on this knife and just wait until you see this. Does this just look all right to you? What in the world? It's phenomenal. Look at this. So this is called the Slater by Dusty at Duckhead Forge. Now, you're probably recognizing that this is a model I've already been testing and the review will actually be up tomorrow um, if all goes according to plan. This is a model that we've already been running and testing. So this is the prototype here of the Slater and we were running it in S60V because that's what we had on hand at the time that this was made. But this is the prototype here. This one has sure grip handles and this is what I ran for a month. We've done a whole bunch of testing with this. It's all up on the channel. This passed with flying colors. But um, while I was testing the prototype, Dusty put together what is going to actually be sold. So as you can see, there are some very minor differences. We have more belly on the actual model. And the edge the degrees per side and just kind of ge the geometry is a little bit different and way more slicey on the actual model. So this one is in K390. It's at 64.5 HRC, all done in house, everything done by him, just like Kyle. Um, we have 20 thou BTE on the prototype. So uh, not crazy thick, but you know, pretty, pretty decent. Um, this one has 9,000 BTE, so a major, major difference. In my opinion, anything 15 BTE or below is pretty darn slicey. So we have really thin and slicey and hard K390. You can see, you can, you can actually barely see that bevel, that edge bevel. You can just barely see it. It's so paper thin. Whereas on the prototype, it came with probably a 20 degree per side angle and I laid it back to 15. No, I'm sorry. I laid it back to 18. So big difference there. And as you can see, not nearly as much belly on the prototype, whereas we've got a whole bunch of belly on the actual model. This one is in vintage linen micarta with some beautiful natural and natural liners and then we've got some orange g10 as well um but this is just absolutely incredible comes with a beautiful handmade usa sheath but i'm really excited about this too because again another model that i had a hand in it's literally called my last name no i did not ask him to do that it was just something he did kindly i didn't even know he was going to do that um but I am so excited about this because this is a little bit smaller, a little more compact. Again, an outdoor and EDC knife, but if you're looking for something a little shorter, uh, here you go. And they're gonna be in really hard K390 all custom done. So another gorgeous, gorgeous knife that we're gonna be testing, the Slater 2.0 basically, but just beautiful work by Dusty over at Duckhead Forge. And Dusty is known for his um, I would say his creativity with the designs, the aesthetics, 
um, and his attention to detail and fit and finish with these really, in, you know, intricate um, materials and the way that they're all put together. So as you can see, he there are multiple layers to this, right? Multiple liners, um, multiple layers. This linen micarta, this vintage micarta has been perfectly executed so that you're getting the different layers of that material. Really different pin design here with the two little pins up front. Um, just the way that he kind of puts it all together is really different. It kind of reminds me of knives that you see from like Fiddleback Forge, um, makers like that. Just really aesthetically be beautiful. But the difference with Dusty is that these actually like perform. You know what I'm saying? Like they're, they're actual knives that you can genuinely take out and use and they don't fail you because they've got, you know, super steel, high hardness, the correct geometry, all that good stuff. So just another beautiful piece from Dusty and I'm so proud of him for for going with this this is not necessarily his uh forte he makes very beautiful knives um and i was just like give me something simple that works and he was still able to put beauty into it but k390 at 64.5 hrc is that's very very good nine thou bte like that's a performer so another one that we are testing and putting up on the channel um the review of this is already filmed and it should be up tomorrow night i just wanted to give everyone a couple of days to get home from blade show uh relax if they do <laughs> um kind of unpack get their things together i wanted to give people a couple of days to kind of do that so that they can actually focus on the review um when it goes up okay so now we're going to talk about the rest of the custom makers that i i really enjoy their work i've i've used it i've abused it and i just absolutely adore what they contribute to the community none of these are in order whatsoever i just put them on the truck bed they're not in any particular order i don't have a favorite over anybody else okay so um next up we have this beauty this is the steadfast edc from steve kalari at kalari custom knives you probably know him as super steel steve but steve just guys he just makes knives that work um i would say steve specializes in high performance edc knives um he uses super steel for the most part and i think that's where he absolutely excels he makes high performance cutting tools like a knife is made to cut and that's what steve's knives do they are laser beams very thin bte high hardness super steels his attention to detail and fit and finish is immaculate um steve is a perfectionist and he's kind of got the mentality of like do it right or don't do it at all type deal um and this knife is absolutely gorgeous this is one that you guys have seen me baton with on the channel even though it has very thin bte um this is magna cut at 63.5 hrc so very thin very hard he does all his edges by hand and these are just high performance cutting tools made to the absolute top level of quality for use. Also, I would honestly say that Steve excels at giving us incredible ergonomics. Um, his knives are very simplistic in design and the ergonomics are some of the best I've ever felt in my life. Like you can hold this knife and cut and cut and cut with it and it just doesn't create any hot spots because he has perfectly executed the ergonomics of this. He makes um, different versions of this knife as well, a couple of smaller versions. He makes all different types of knives. The Huck is a big one, which is like a Warncliffe style EDC knife. But um, Steve is someone who I, I'm just so proud of him because he has shared his story of how he's kind of gotten to where he is. And for someone that lost everything in a finger snap and was like, well, time to, you know, buck up and get it together. Like, I'm not going to sit around and make a sob story. Um, he flipped his life around. And now look at him. He's at Blade. He's selling knives on like Blade Binge Official. He's selling them on his own Instagram. He's, you know, he's just someone that I look up to and admire for what he does in the community. So 
Kalari Custom Knives, huge, huge props. Next up, we have Levi at Northern Knife Works. Now, Levi, this guy blows my mind too. Levi's young. I want to say he's maybe 26 or something. Levi is in Georgia. Um, Dusty is in Georgia. Steve is in Georgia. Levi's in Georgia. Levi owns his own little shop. He does everything by hand. Everything is done by him. Heat tree, everything. All the edges. Um, Levi is a very young knife maker doing all of the work and he makes absolutely incredible knives. Um, Levi, I would say he excels with his grinds, his heat treat, definitely his edges. His edges are nutty, but um, Levi's heat treat it, for any steel is just nutty. Levi can take knives that he makes in like 10 thou BTE 65 HRC crew wear, and he will make videos, which I've posted, of him taking antler and smashing as hard as he can these 10,000 BTE knives into antler and then whittling with them um, and, and just beating the pulp out of them and then clean slicing receipt paper after, all on camera, unedited. I've posted it before. It's on his page too. Um, Levi's work is freaking nutty. I am so excited to see where Levi continues to grow in the community because um, if he's this young and doing this quality of work right now, imagine where he's going to be in five years. Like, it's mind-blowing. His fit and finish is absolutely stunning. Attention to detail is phenomenal. And he works with everything from K390, S125V, Crewwear, MagnaCut, ABL, Nitro-V, anything. Anything you throw at this kid, he's like, okay. Um, just absolutely phenomenal work i've had multiple collaborations with him this is one of mine it's called the mink but levi makes high performance cutting tools and they are made to the top specifications that you could you could ever imagine absolutely incredible work by levi next up we're going in a completely different direction here um we are going to look at a knife from alan at primitive bear knives now alan is um I would say the opposite end of the spectrum. Alan is like rugged, outdoors dude. Um, let's beat the crap out of everything. Let's make feather sticks and bonfires and, um, you know, let's run beefy knives that you can take and throw into a tree 250 times and still cut paper with after. That's kind of Alan's mentality. He is a big brute of a dude and boy can he make some incredible knives i have not i had not had a good experience with adcrv2 until i used allen's and um allen made the knife for me that was an adcrv2 higher hardness i think 63 hrc and that's the one that i took on camera and we like hacked a whole bunch of fish apart like cut through the bones chopped their heads off like just smashed into the tailgate of the truck clean cut paper before clean cut paper after absolutely insane um alan's work is nutty and if you're looking for a an immaculate knife um but that is a little beefier a little thicker and definitely more like a outdoors knife a camp knife something like that alan does wild work this is his edisto model this is the gen 2 this specific one is in crew wear but he does some really beautiful work. Incredible fit and finish. Um, he uses a lot of these under the bridge scales. So you've got really cool segmented scales on these. He does the rock pattern as well. Super grippy, but um, you know, definitely a little thicker. These tend to be 30, 33 thou BTE, 400 grit finish on that edge, but toothy beaters of knives and he, he made a video the other day of a 4V Hunter's EDC, I think it was, and he like chopped a, a, a small tree apart with it. Um, and then like, it, it, it was perfectly fine. Like he, he just makes some absolute beaters of knives that really do perform incredibly well. I love Alan's work. Um, I'm not a big fan of like the, the simpler seal, steels like ADC RV2 unless you're doing them right and alan's someone who does them right i from what i understand i think we're going to be seeing more crew wear from him which i really love but 
props to Alan, man. Absolutely incredible guy. Very down to earth. Um, love his work. Next up, we have a, a knife maker from Canada. So you guys probably have heard of Kyle Noseworthy. And he makes some really wild knives. Honestly, Kyle has grown so much since I started watching him. His journey has been an honor to be part of, really, because he started making knives in his little workshop. He has a beautiful family, a bunch of um, beautiful little girls that he has. Uh, he has his own little business and shop in Newfoundland, Canada. And he has gone from, you know, making a couple knives at a time to like continuously having them on his site i know he runs like a mechanic shop as well he has a youtube channel with hundreds of thousands of people watching and subscribe to him um everything is by hand in his shop and he makes outdoors knives um you could definitely use them for edc as well but i think because he works with steels like o1 tool steel um and these knives are kind of thick and overbuilt i would say he makes knives for the for the outdoorsman uh, people that are hunting, fishing, camping, doing bushcraft. Kyle Noseworthy does incredible work. And his um, mod work and recovers are out of this world. He can take like a, a buck 110 and like put elk antler on it with like Damascus or like these swirly back springs and all this crazy stuff. And it looks like it was made like that from the shop. Like Kyle is so talented. I'm so lucky to be, oh, sorry, I'm getting a phone call. Let me delete that. Um, I'm so lucky that I have been part of his journey. I've, I've been watching him from the start. Um, I have a handwritten note from him actually from like, I want to say six years ago. Um, just incredible work. And I would say he specializes again in outdoors knives, knives that you can take on your camping trips and your hunting trips and use, um, just beautiful, beautiful pieces. They will patina. They feel incredible. Um, yeah, Kyle really pays attention to, like, design, I, I would say, um, and performance for the common outdoorsman. Next up, we have someone that I don't see a ton of content on, so I'm really excited to shine some light on the work that Todd does over at Goathead Knives. But um, this is a trapper in Nitro V from Todd, and he does incredible work. He's someone that I kind of stumbled upon on Instagram, and I just happened to reach out and be like, I, I really like the look of your knives. If you ever want to, um, you know, send something over to test and re review, let me know. And he instantly did. Super cool guy. He does all of the stuff in his own little shop. I, these are so beautiful. I would figure he's machining these scales and um, he just has a really cool aesthetic. This is, I believe, 63 HRC Nitro V. So I really like that beautiful scalloped jimping like thin and slicey um not overbuilt just just a, a performance knife um definitely more of a hunting knife here but that's okay but todd does awesome work he works with um i've seen a lot of magna cut knives from him but i think nitro v is probably his specialty but um just beautiful pieces from goat head knives really cool guy to talk to i've had some good conversation with him he seems to be consistently trying to keep availability for his products, which I really like. He, it only looks like he has, you know, two or three models right now, but um, I'd honestly rather have a maker that can consistently keep two or three models in stock than having a maker that has 12 models and none of them are ever available for us. I would totally rather have the availability. availability. So um, props to Todd. He makes beautiful knives, definitely, again, specializing in hunting designs. This is, I mean, a trapper, so look at that. Nice and thin and slicey, um, perfect grind, all the good stuff. So really, really specializing in hunting knives, which I absolutely love because um, I used to be a, a big hunter. Not anymore, but um, used to be, so I can really appreciate a tool for that. We've got two more, guys. Um, another totally different direction here we're going to look at a piece from joe colton at colton cutlery uh joe is an old school guy he's a master bladesmith he does everything in his little workshop and this is a necker by him i think it's called the carter neck knife 1095 high carbon steel stupid thin i think this one is like 7000 bte 
I don't even know what the blade stock is because it's nearly invisible. But Joe is one of those guys that I can really appreciate because he's an older knife maker. Um, he has a really cool YouTube channel. He's the one that made the 940 review that has hundreds of thousands of views, the 10 year review of the 940. And he like made his own blades for him, put them in. Um, but Joe is someone I appreciate because he uses simple steels like 1095, but the way that he heat treats them and specifically his geometry, that's what I appreciate because for me, 1095, for instance, doesn't work super well if you have a, a really thick blade stock and 35 thou BTE and 58 HRC, right? Like that's not a knife that's going to perform well. But if you take 1095, make it paper thin, run it, you know, 60 HRC, super thin and slicey, that's something I can use and stand behind. So, um, Joe is just a really cool guy. I think he has a very different stance than the mainstream stance that a lot of knife makers and knife reviewers and knife enthusiasts have. I really appreciate Joe's work. It's beautiful. It's old school. Um, he has a ton of educational videos on his channel. And Joe really makes knives for the outdoorsman, 100%. And someone who just likes to use knives. Um... I really appreciate what Joe contributes to the community. Very cool guy, super easy to talk to, and he definitely specializes in actually making um, 1095 work on a knife. I really, really appreciate, appreciate Joe. We've got one more, guys, and I'm sure you know who this is because this is someone I've supported since I started this whole thing. Mr. John Miller from BGM Knives, guys. John is a young, young knife maker. Um, I think, I want to say John's younger than me. I want to say he's maybe 25 or something, maybe 26, I don't know. Um, super similar to Levi, right? Everything in his own little shop, he does all of the stuff by hand. Um, everything is done by him. I believe he started in New York. Then he moved to New Hampshire, where I am. I actually have visited his shop. I got to see how he does things. And then he moved to a different spot in New Hampshire. I believe he's in Berlin, way up north, way, way up north, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> um, but John is in New Hampshire with me, and John specializes in absolute beater knives, guys. His knives are um, thick, overbuilt these are knives that you can use for anything. I would almost go as far to say that they are multi-tool knives. John makes multi-tool knives. Um, he does work with anything from your basic tool steels all the way up to CPM steels. Um, he does 3V, he does MagnaCut. Uh, what else does he do? Nitro V, I think he does um, AEBL maybe. Um, he's done 5200, 80 CRV2. He kind of will work with anything that he has on deck, but John's work is really impressive. Like I said, thick blade stocks, just complete beefy knives. He does incredible, incredible regrinds, guys, and double hollow grinds. So I do know that Levi is getting into regrinds as well if you're in the Georgia area, but John, his regrinds on production knives are insane if you have a strider an emerson a hinderer a spiderco a benchmate and you want that thing to actually slice send it to john his regrinds are nutty um and his double hollow grinds that he runs on some of his models are just so crazy the depth of this double hollow i'm going to be able to sharpen this for the rest of my life and it will still cut look at look at that choil he does incredible work. This is the mini spade. This one's an M4. So yeah, he works with M4. Um, he does cryo for his, uh, he does double cryos. Um, his edges, I would say, they're not like, they're not the best. Um, I've had a little bit of trouble with the edges just because they're like a little glassed out in my opinion. And it's something that he's acknowledged too. Um, so sometimes you have to like put your own edge on, but the whole, the whole aesthetic, the whole build of the knife, it should not fail you. And if it does, John will make it right by you. But John just makes absolute beaters of knives and they're, the heat treat is on point. Um, I really admire John's work. And like I said, if you put your own edge on, you're probably going to get way more out of the tool 
than initially. Um, and I think that's something that he's working on. I remember him saying he wanted to get a, a Tormek. I think that's how you pronounce it, but just someone that I can't wait to see grow in the community too. He's a young knife maker who's fully invested. I think his wait list is like seven to eight months right now, which just makes my heart so happy because I remember when I could put in an order and get it within at, at most three months. Now it's like freaking seven to eight months and that makes me so happy. But guys, those are some of the makers that I just absolutely appreciate. I look up to them. I admire them. These are not all the best makers in the world. I think it would, I, I don't think I will ever, ever, ever get my hands on all of the knives that are made by the most beautiful makers in the community. It's just never going to happen. There's always new people coming into it. I know of like 25 new makers right now that are entering the scene and it's creating just beautiful competition between everyone because that's what we need, right? Um, as long as everyone is being competitive in a respectful manner, I love that. I love all these makers. There are so many more that I'm missing that I don't have um, my hands on their pieces, but uh, that is what I have for you guys today. Please check all of these makers out. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to link all of them below, but I can surely try. I love all of them. I appreciate all of them. That's what I have for you guys today. Today, um, I can't wait to show you guys use of these two new collaborations, but that's, that's it guys. I love you guys so much. Go use your shit, learn how to sharpen your knives. I will see you on the next video. I love and appreciate you guys so much. Take care.